Hey guys, it's Jen from Skin and Cut Canvas and Scale Help on Facebook. Alright, so my next venture is this. Okay, I have a, a whole layette, which is the gown, the onesie, the hat, the bib, and the big blanket. And then I have these fat quarters. I have a whole bunch of other ones, but I'm going to choose the ones that are all um, from the same pack and these are from Walmart super cheap okay and I also got this stuff um, I went online I had to get I can't even remember what it was but this stuff from Palan um, I know what it was I was looking for the soft back stuff because um, <clears throat> when doing this you know you put that stuff on the back so it doesn't itch the baby skin and it came up one of these well as I was looking these are like 20 bucks uh, these are all 12 by 12 inches by 5 yards in each roll well it was something like uh, I think 25 bucks well these were all marked down on clearance for nine dollars okay that's a pretty pretty good price um, that's less of course less than three dollars a piece um, I think it's like 275 a piece so that's a pretty good deal and that's on walmart.com um, so I'm going to try some of these um, I, don't, I didn't even read what was in them so <laughs> I'll have to check and see but we're uh, you've already seen me make the um, the long I'm going to use this one and I'm going to have the name go along this way okay and I'm going to use this and I'm probably going to use um, my, I don't even know if it's in here. There's stabilizer, soft and stay, cutaway stabilizer. Um, so in, okay, so this is the um, iron-on type, I think. So we'll see uh, if I can use any of these to do that so I can show you how to cut um, from there. But anyways, I do have the video that shows you already posted um, how I went ahead and did that part so you can see how I took a file, brought it in, but I only use in Brilliance. I don't have a lot of the other programs. As you can see, my machine is a 770, so I don't have the on-machine um, ability to edit. Um, and if you're wondering how you go about doing all that, we have a bunch of files in the file section on our page on our Facebook group page which is scan and cut canvas and scal help on Facebook um, the link if you go to the banner page on our YouTube channel here uh, the F the Facebook logo click on that and that'll take you right to our Facebook page but if you look in the file section you'll see we have a uh, pretty much all of the popular uh, ways to turn your PES PES file into an FCM okay um, and I do have lots of videos showing you how to do it in Brilliance. it's super easy and I actually do have the 650 so I can use that function but I prefer to actually change it to an FCM it's just easier and it's a lot quicker too so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting the fabric prepped to cut it in my scan and cut um, and I'll get this little gown ready. Um, I thought this was the zip side, but it doesn't look like it, so I guess I'm in trouble. Um, but I can go ahead and do that. And I do have that special uh, thingy that allows you to embroider on it. I can't remember the name of it, but as soon as I find it, I will show you. So we'll go ahead and get this fabric ready to be cut. Okay, so I have four little pieces cut out, and I'm going to try to use this, it's called Fuse and Tear. So we'll see um, how well it goes when I use uh, this. I always want to try to experiment with new stuff, because I understand that people may not have exactly what I have, um, and that's completely fine. Um, when I do my videos, you do not need to use exactly what I have. If what you have is comparable, go ahead and use that. Um, so, oops, can't put it on there yet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, grab my iron, and I'm going to hopefully iron it on the back, and we'll see if it works. If not, I'll slap some Wonder Under on it. Okay. 
So I got it all on its little backing thing. I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. I don't even know if you can tear it off or if it's supposed to stay on there. Guess it would have helped if I would have stopped and read it, huh? Mm, it doesn't even stay. Look. Not good stuff. It doesn't stay. So it looks like I'm going to be redoing this. I guess I'll read the directions a little better. Maybe it's just to help you cut. Yeah, it didn't stick. So I'll save that for something else. Like, after I read the direction. I'll get out my trusty, dusty Wonder Under. They also sell that at Walmart.com for real cheap for an entire bolt. I think the entire bolt was 12 bucks or 11 I think it was $11 for the entire bolt. Let me cram this back in the top here. Better dig the cover out of the trash can. And I'll put the Wonder Under back on it and then we will stick this onto the mat according to the grid. So I'll put one in each corner here and then we'll take it over to the machine. Okay, so I have my pylon on and I have the fabrics or the paper side stuck down. I do not pull my uh, my paper backing off of it yet because if you put adhesive to adhesive, you're going to have a gigantic mess. So I ironed the pylon on and left the backing on it still and just stuck the backing down to the mat. And I brought it over here and we're going to get ready to do uh, the cutting. So let me get my little pointy thingy. Okay. Did you see that? It looks... No, you can't see anything because I don't have it focused in. The file looks blank. Typical scale. This file looks gigantic. Look at this file. It's still only that big. This empty. No. Huge letters. It's just something with shirt cuts a lot. So don't be alarmed. Okay, let's see. What do I want? I want to start this with pink. So let's put that over there. Let me make sure my piece is big enough. One, two, three, four and a half. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that is big enough. Pink green pink blue so I'm gonna bring all them down bring them all over and put them out in their respective corners but I have to change blades so I'm gonna change my blade and get ready to cut here's my fabric blade holder and fabric blade all ready to go so I'm going to do the old switcheroo. Oops, this one's in here kind of tight. And I look at the end of my blade holder, see what the tip looks like. Blow it out, make sure there's no crap hanging around in there. And Cut speed one, cut pressure minus one. And I think I'm going to set it at about a four and a half.
it did something ugly, so we'll have to take a look at that one and see what's up with that corner. Let's see what happened here. Not stuck down probably, so let's hit OK. Before I eject it, we're going to back up here. And we're going to hang on a minute. And let me grab my little pick tool, which would have been nice to have already, huh? So I didn't take so blasted long. Okay, so that's not a cut through. I'm going to check over here. And check down here. Okay, so this one is a cut through. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete these letters because I don't need to recut them, but I need to recut this Y. But I'm going to go through here and make sure that it is stuck down. But I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to decrease my pressure just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to unfasten my blade and I'm going to increase the pressure or increase the blade depth. So I went from a four and a half, so now I'm up to a an eight. And we'll see if that'll help. And I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Nope, it's still catching in that corner. So something tells me that it's just not stuck down and I can see that it's actually coming up. So let me see why. Well, I can already see why. My fabric is not adhered to this. There isn't even any adhesive. I don't think you can see this. There is no adhesive on the back here. So my fabric was never stuck to this. So that's why it was coming up. You can see, maybe hopefully, can you see the shiny part? Yes. See the shiny part and how it ends and that's why it was catching. So there's always a reason that our scan and cut acts up. This time it was, can you see that? shiny and then it stops right where my thumb's at right here and that's where it was catching so it's not the scan and cuts fault it was my fault that I did not notice that there was no adhesive there so excellent job scan and cut you did what you were supposed to do and I then glue the daggum thing down right but it still made perfect cuts and all I need to do is take my little scissors and make that one tiny trim and that little tiny piece and it'll be fixed. Oh, just like, maybe if I can get my scissors to cooperate, just like that. There we go. So we have a good piece now. All the other ones have cut just fine, and I will take us back to the table and get them all situated. Okay, so here's all the letters laid out on this little gown. I really love how the machine cuts the letters. I mean, just so crisp and so clean. Um, and like I said, I use in Brilliance, and it is really just so easy to do. Um, and right, I know I'm going to use the uh, 12, uh, 5 by 12 repositionable hoop to um, do this one. But I need to find that thingy 
uh, to see if I can use that to do this or if I'll have to rip the seam out. I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to pull the seam, but we will see. Okay, here's the thingy. This is a JT Hoop It Up um, thing. I don't even know if this is what I'm going to use with it. Like I said, I am brand new to this, so I am learning as I go, but I absolutely love learning. Um, so it was kind of like this, the big 5x12 hoops. Um, I find it very easy to use things like this. So um, I'm going to figure out if that's what I can use um, to do it or if I'll just rip the seam out. So you and I will learn as we go. Yay. It's a seam rip and we will go. I forgot the, uh, the hoop it up is for the onesie. So I will be using that with the onesie that I have and the design I have up for, that I made up for that. So we're going to go ahead and rip the seam out. We're going to put it in the big 5 by 12 hoop and then we'll get jamming on that. Okay, so here it is all ripped apart. Put in my uh, 5 by 12 frame. Um, I have it this is floated so I have uh, two layers of the soft and stay um, put in here I sprayed them with a 505 stuck them together and I only have one pin in it right now and um, I'm gonna sit here and babysit the machine um, because with something so little like this little gown it's hard to get it to stretch over this um, kind of where I want it in this corner is um, kind of an issue um, because if I bring it up here to where it needs to be um, it kind of wants to pull this over so I'm just gonna have to sit and make sure that it stays where it needs to be um, as the machine stitches so doing these is definitely something that um, will require me to sit here and watch so I'm gonna go ahead and get the machine set up Okay, so here we are at the machine. Um, the top is actually right up here. So I had to flip this all around because, of course, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Um, so when you put your design in, you really kind of have to think in your head how you want it. So let me back up here. Let me back all the way out to show you what I did. Okay. You bring it in. Of course, you hit your thingy-mabobber there. You find this, hit that thing that takes it in there. Well, it's going to start, if I leave it just like that, it's going to start up here because this is the first portion. Well, I don't want it to <laughs> start up here. That's not how I want the design. I want it to start down here and read upwards or start up here and read downwards, whichever way you want it. But I want it to start here and come up. Well, if I leave it like this, it's not going to look like that. So what I do is I come in here and I hit adjust and layout. Well, I know I hit this little doohickey right there and I hit 90. Well, it's going to adjust at 180 because it can't adjust at 90. So it flips it. Okay, that's fine. But if I leave it right here where it's at, if I use the top if I use the top knobs which are right here if I plug those in there it's gonna put the A and the R up here that's not gonna work so I need to use the two bottom holes which are now the top holes okay but according to how the little uh, gown is it's the bottom holes because it's by the bottom so now that I'm viewing it that way now the AR should start right here okay now I gotta go through and set up and set up all this other wonderful crap so I'll be back there's that word okay so I've started to stitch did my little line thing and you see these are still flipped the wrong way why well, it's like that I don't know maybe a cork in the little machine but I have my first part down here so let's stick this in here and I'm trying to get a little um, oh, why did, let me pull this up I want to kind of go with the I guess it's the tattered look 
I guess. That's what you call it. Okay. So we'll let that keep going. so it's going to sit here and do its sewing. Okay, so now it says finish sewing. So you hit OK. Come over here and you release this and then you move it to the final two positions that are on your big old hoop. Oops. And then you come back and you find your second piece. I think this is it. I don't think that's it. Let me see. I can't ever see this dead gum screen. Oh, yep, that's it. It just looks like a jumbled old mess to me. Yep, that's it. Okay, so let's get to moving on it. Oops, I forgot. I don't need that part. We gotta come here to that plus minus and then move past it. There we go. Now I can hit the OK button. And that'll finish us up where the R left off because that's what happened. That we came to the middle design. And that's one thing I love about Embrilliance because it splits the design for you. All you do is plug in the design in here um, and it takes care of all of it. All you need to do is move the hoop and that's it. So I'm going to let this keep stitching and I'll come back when I pull it off the machine because there's really nothing else to do other than to just let this stitch. Okay, so here it is all done. <clears throat> I went ahead and sewed this side back together. And one thing, um, with Embrilliance, you heard correct, it does split this. Um, you don't have to do anything except for position it in that large 5x12 hoop. It does all the splitting, everything. You put your design in the studio like you've seen me do on the video. Put it in there and save it. That's all you do. It splits it for you. It does whatever it's supposed to do. You just have to figure out how to position it. And let me show you on here. With um, the hoops... When you um, set it into the machine, 
this is the first position and this is the second position okay so like when I put it in there I put it in this position first though because I needed to have this done and I flipped it around and had it in there backwards so it takes sometimes it's just your um, visual perceptual skills um, so you need to be able to have good ones of those and understand you know how the uh, your item is placed in there um, but it, I, that's what I really like about that is it splits it for you and does all that so you don't really have to do any thinking um, so this is done and now I'm going to probably pick something else to work on but this is a um, embroidery applique start to finish use the other video where I show you on machine or on uh, the computer the file creation all right, if you guys have any questions, find me over at Scan and Cut Canvas and Scout Help on Facebook. Thanks, guys.